Welcome back to the podcast, and you're listening to the Traveling Pants of a Single Mom. And of course, I have my co-host Tom. Say hey, girl. What's up? And this week we have Ziggy Bailey back, and we are starting. If you see, um, saw our um advertisement posts, we are starting coffee with Ziggy every fourth oh, Wednesday. Really? Of the month, yes. yes, every four points day of the month. So, we're doing a new let's segment. See. So, let's see how you guys Woo-hoo. like it. If you love it, this camera bothered me. Over so, here. let's restart. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so welcome back to the podcast, y'all. As I stated, we have our homegirl Ziggy Bailey, um, and we're doing our uh coffee with Ziggy every fourth Wednesday, every and this is Wednesday. our first segment. So, let's get into it. So, Ziggy. I'm gonna let you take over, girl. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you. So, coffee will zig. Coffee with Ziggy will be every fourth Wednesday, and I prefer coffee over tea. Mm. So I it's like just tea, like so I don't know what you're gonna do. I'm with sorry. The, I do both. It would be like tea with Ziggy, but I like coffee, so it's gonna be coffee with Ziggy. Okay. And kind of because we're gonna be talking about some, 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 some issues and some some things. So some we're not drinking food. coffee. You know what? I had the everything. We're gonna be set up at the table next week. We'll be drinking. Well, I thought we was gonna drink some tea or coffee or something like that. But anyway, next we, time. We, we, next time. I we, promise. We 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 getting into it. We getting into it. Oh, okay. I promise. <laughs> so um, I'm so honored that you guys allowed me to do the segment on the show. Um, I've been wanting to do my own podcast, but you guys have a little more expertise in the podcast um, arena. So it's good for me to just start out this way, All doing right. the segment, right? Um, and all this black girl magic. Yeah. So, Melanie. I'm just introducing myself and the podcast today. Anybody who wants to contact me or has any topics they want to discuss, you can inbox me on Instagram or you can email me at coffeewithziggy at yahoo.com. Yes. And my Instagram is at Ziggy Bailey, just in case you don't know. And that's not for my live, that's for everything else. All right. So, I, just a little bit about me. <laughs> I'm a fashion designer. I've been known as a fashion designer for a very long time. And it's something that I've been passionate about since I was like 10 years old. But um, I've also been very passionate about um, what makes people do the things that they do. Mm-hmm. So like my whole life I used to research serial killers, how they grew up, how you know how their childhood was, right, right. what made them start doing certain things. And I always wanted to know why people do things that are what we would consider bad. Right. And which is based on perception. But it's bad when it makes you feel not good. Right. Right. So therefore we call it bad. But, um, and my mother should have been able to tell me this a long time ago. But I I always, I I am interested in cognitive psychology. I thought I was going to be interested in clinical, which is when you diagnose people and you tell them, oh, you have this or you hear yeah, right, bipolar right. or this, but that's not what I like. I like to understand what happened mm-hmm. before. Right. So, and I, I like to understand how the brain develops from infant to toddlers to adolescents to adults because there are stages in life where you have really big transitions. Right. And based on how your life has been is how you go. The right. 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 Um, and, and um, there's a little bit of genetics in that too. So genetics and psych uh, upbringing is what makes us all. Right. right. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm a fashion designer and future psychologist with a passion to learn, to teach, and to understand. So that's what I plan to do. Okay. Um, I have a perception. I have a um, perspective that is really different than the average female I think on a lot of things Mm -hmm. from finances to relationships to parenting to a lot of different things and they so far have worked for me I have two very intelligent children who are very advanced in everything that they do Um, they're both gifted Um, I am financially probably a little ahead of the average African American single mother poverty is very um, common with Mm -hmm. African Americans and mothers, single mothers, because 50%, over 50% of all African American kids are raised in a single Single mother, Mm -hmm. single parent household, but mostly single mothers. And um, a lot of crime, a lot of 
more, a lot more poverty and a lot more um, just declining economic um, state of minds All are right. created that way. It, it's just a cycle. Okay. So anyway, my perspective is a little different on all those things. I've excelled and progressed in every way, so I want to share that perspective. Um, this show is going to be to, pro to provide therapy and just an outlet to talk about those subjects that are taboo. And I mean from sex to uh, oral sex, uh, anything that you can think of, we're going to talk about it because it needs to be spoken about. Right, right, right. Like last week, you kind of brought something up that was kind of taboo, but it's like it's like an elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Should you put your significant other before oh, your child? Right, right, right. And you did not agree with me, and that's 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 what this is for. So we can right. all throw out our ideas. Mm -hmm. Why you don't agree? Why I feel this way? I feel. What was your uh, stance on that? Um, I kind of, I think I kind of took on both ends. Oh. I think too. I think yeah. I'm on both ends. It just depends oh, really? on how the situation. Yeah, is, yeah. Right? it depends. Yeah, like like when when we discussed it a little further, and you was like, you you kind of like narrowed it down to your husband or your life partner. Right. But that's that, that's when it made the difference. Versus a boyfriend versus or you, you know, somebody you're dating. dating. Right. right. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. So and from this. I believe that we can create an elite class of African American people, and from what you're doing too. Uh, so just collectively, that's right. what that I feel like that is the the goal. The goal. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll just start by me asking you two about my uh, Wisdom Wednesday post. It was sometimes um, new beginnings are disguised as painful endings, mm -hmm. and I know you guys can relate to that. Everybody right. can relate to that, and it's not just. In relationships, it could be business relationships, it can be um, living arrangements, it can be anything. Anything. Um, you, do you guys have any? I mean, I, I feel like pain is the the greatest teacher. Um, when we go, if if we don't go through painful things, we will never learn. Like I look at people who were born rich. They don't know what it, it is to struggle. They don't know that side of pain. So they do whatever. They're frivolous with their money. They're frivolous with their time. They do whatever. But the minute they have the experience or something, may or they may look at other people that are struggling, they're like, how, how, what are they doing? How, why, why are they doing this that way? Or, you know, like they, they would never be able to relate. But that's why they have a different a different mindset that's why some of them commit suicide that's why some because they don't the minute they I remember when we remember when we went into um like a uh when everybody was losing their jobs and um I remember this one family the guy lost his job and he killed himself and his whole family because they laid him off they gave him unemployment you know they gave them unemployment but they had big bills like they were making over you know six figures a year you giving us this and the, they couldn't relate to, to, to what we they got know how to make so they committed suicide they know so obvious. the pain though is your greatest teacher and I feel like without that you don't grow the way you need to mentally I agree that's the that's kind of the worst thing you can do is is hand your children or mm -hmm. hand yeah hand your children anything right you have to teach them about finances you have to teach them about everything you have to make them a productive member of society if they don't understand what's going to happen when they walk out that door then you, you set them, them up earlier right? yeah yes so it's, it's, it's beauty definitely in having uh painful going through painful experiences at the moment i believe that you don't when you're going through it it's it doesn't feel obviously it doesn't feel right. good. Mm -hmm. At that moment, you're not looking at it as a, a you know a, a lesson or teaching tool mm -hmm. for the future. But once it's over with and it's dealt with, mm -hmm. then it's like okay. And like for my example, I'll go back to like the an old relationship that I was in. It was a really good relationship. It was actually at, I thought it was the beginning of greatness when I was you know dating this uh, pastor. Um, and that person, he understood me more than anybody. It's the first time I've ever had somebody from what I called the other side understand me and who I was, my faults, my flaws, everything. 
but accepted me for who I was. So that was like my greatest moment. But then when it was taken away from me, um, it was very painful, right. very painful. And that could have been a moment for me to go backwards. Yeah. But I used that moment and in that time to grow. And it took me to other places. It opened up um, my mind. It expanded like, you know, because I had to ask myself again, like, who, you know, who am I? Um, I didn't know at one point was I good enough. But now I had to go back and say, wait a second, I am good enough. So I learned to love myself again, who I am. And I'm still going through, uh, still learning myself and who I am. But it just, it made, it was a beginning of, you know, of greatness. Right. To know who's Tasha, what's Tasha all about, mm -hmm. what's Tasha really want to do. Outside of religion, outside of a man, outside of love. Yeah. What is it that I love about myself? Right. So for that, that was a moment of me for like truth. Mm -hmm. And I think a time when, you know, a painful situation turned to greatness. To greatness. So. Everything is a blessing or a lesson. Mm -hmm. So, whenever something does put you in a situation where it hurts you, I always ask myself, "What did I learn? Right. What would I? What will I do differently Different. next time?" Right. Because whether you believe it or not, you are one hundred percent responsible for your life. So, whatever is going on in your life right now today, it's one hundred percent your fault. Oh, right. No matter. You can try to blame stuff on everybody. Mm -hmm. You did something to put yourself where you are right now. You know, I don't care what the what it is. I used to be ignorant to that. I used to hear that before, and it's funny. I hear that now, and it's crazy. This is the third time I'm hearing that, and I understand it now. Mm -hmm. Because before, I used to take it as it was offensive. Like, what do you mean? I didn't cause any of this. Well, like, he did. It's not this. my it's fault. Right. It's not that. my fault that I didn't. You, you allowed him to do that. Or you couldn't find, you know, this, or you couldn't get another place, or... Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you know, you're getting paid this much. You can't, you, you just find all, all kinds of reasons right. and excuses. But then when you really go back and think about it, like you said, I've heard this and now to hear it again, it resonates with me differently now. Because right. it's like, you're right. It's up to me to, if somebody says you, you close the door, it's up to me to go find, go to another door, another, door. another option. What else can I do? But exactly. Right. You are even, and it, it, it can, <laughs> and this is all based on perception, but it can even get to where, is it when someone does something wrong to you, you still have to place blame on yourself. So, Not, yeah, take responsibility. Right. I would say place blame. Yeah, you gotta because take responsibility. You put that person mm -hmm. in that position. So then you gotta say, it's my fault. And mm -hmm. then that's power. Because then you take all the power away from them. Mm -hmm. You're right. They didn't Absolutely. do anything. It was me. Right. <laughs> we just gotta be more anything. cautious mm -hmm. about the decisions we make. And, and, and also, we have to really tap into our intuitive self because there's a lot of times when you like it if, if it's you're starting a relationship if it's a friendship if it's something you're doing with your kids most times you get a gut feeling you get that initial feeling like nah this ain't right but of course you want to experience that person or that thing so instead of listening to your inner self that says nah that's not that's not you that's not right you still go along with it yeah. and the same reason or the same thing that that person did to make you feel that is most times the same reason why a year two three years yeah, down the line y'all end up not working because your intuitive self told you already from the door like nah that's that's not it sis yeah but we we disregard we disregard and we need to uh, like our yeah we need to realize that our intuition will tell us anything we need to know it's just that we don't be listening yes i'm learning to tap into that like intuition can see through elusive intent that's what her said is so it's the truest realest is she ever wrote intuition can see through elusive intent listen to it right now there's so many times we see red flags and it's and, and we just go you right through the side. So stop sign. That means stop. I told you, don't cross this line. I told you. I told you last year. But then us, we're females. We like to be in a relationship or we like mm -hmm. monogamy. We like those things. Men are not so into it unless a female makes them want those things. But that's what we are geared towards. We're mm -hmm. geared to nurture. We're geared to love. We want to be loved. Right. So we just... We let we see all the red flags. They let face like this red. You know, you need like, you like and then when they when it's all said and done, so that's where that's where it becomes like your your problem yeah. or you that's your, your fault because at, I remember I was in a very uh, probably around the time Tasha was uh, with the pastor. I was in a situation where 
Um, and I think this was the turning point in my life that I started to realize, like, okay, Tasha, you put you first. Put you first. Mm -hmm. You know, I met somebody a little bit down the line, realized, oh, they had a whole family, whatever the case may be. Hmm. And the old me would have took whatever excuse they would have said, oh, well, we, we don't work. It's not working out. And I probably would have went along with it because I was so into the person. But you this wanted was the, I trip. wanted I, right. But this was the first time I realized that I understood that you are changing. When I told him, "Listen, no good. I'm putting me first. I'm not gonna go through that." You know what I'm saying? We gotta realize we see these things, we experience it. They show us, they tell us, mm -hmm. and then we still go through it. And then when we get our feelings hurt, then we want to look at everybody and be like, "Oh, you, you did this. Blame. You want to place the blame." But at the end of the day, you knew the fact. That's to blame. Yeah. Take 100% responsibility, mm -hmm. and that's power. Because yes. you won't let it happen again. Right. Because it's on me. If I say you did it, it's on you. Mm -hmm. It ain't on you, it's on me. Right. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take 100% responsibility. That's it. Or you got to, like, we'll make excuses for somebody. Mm hmm. You sure will. Should I create a whole story in my head? Should I make <laughs> a tailor fit? Take all the back, take yeah. everything and turn to turn it around and but but mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we, we gotta are. stop. We gotta stop because it's like we're hurting our we're hurting ourselves. We're yeah. caught we're inflicting the pain on ourselves by continuing to dismiss all the things that we see and continuing down the road, continue down the road. It's asinine. Like I, we, I, I be looking at myself sometimes. Like, damn, you, you did this a million times. When are you gonna do, something, you gonna different? do something different? Mm -hmm. That's when you actually need to ask yourself, though. And I've, I've, I had to question this thing one time because I, I had this conversation with someone before, and it was like, why do you, why do certain people, as if myself, why do we repeat the same thing over and over and over again? Right? Habits. And I said to myself, I think it's you have to go deeper within the actual person. Sometimes it's. The things that we see on the surface, it's not so easy to tell somebody to, you know, just turn it off like a light switch. Hmm. There are things within that person, and it goes back to you saying, what happened? Mm -hmm. What happened at three? What happened at five or yeah. seven or 11? That somebody you. could have, you know, never had a father growing up. Somebody could have been raped. Somebody could have been molested. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have, you know, been neglected. Been like neglected. Anything. Yeah. There was a situation that caused it, and this is why they are who they are. So I think that now you got to go in a little deeper. You got to get to the, the gut of mm -hmm. what the main issue is because you can tell somebody all day, and we can ask ourselves all day. And a lot of us struggle with this so for the ones that are struggling. Like, you know, why am I this way? Why am I doing these things? It's not your fault sometimes. It, it, it is, but something triggered it. So, like when Ziggy says, it's our fault because we have the opportunity to change it. We, we have the opportunity heal. to want to heal and change it. But with help, if we want help, you, have you to can't. It. Right. You can get the change in order to Sometimes make it's a tough to clear your mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need someone outside of you who doesn't know anything about you or your situation to listen and tell you, oh, this is what it looks like from the outside looking mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm that will help give you some perspective, help you organize those thoughts and those ideas. Um, I'm usually really good about that. Like, look, I, like I'll just print something out or I'll make something to organize some stuff. But um, you need that. You need clarity. Because if you're not clear on something, you cannot make an informed decision. Right. You know? And um, But on the, uh, what I wanted to say earlier was on the other side of pain, there's usually something very beautiful. Every time that I've went through something that has been very painful, it's very rare that I show it on the outside, but on the inside, it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. scars on the inside are way harder to heal oh, than yeah. scars on the outside. Absolutely. You can, I just rather you shoot me or punch me in the face, but don't, don't scar me on the inside because it's gonna take time to yeah. come back from that. Okay. But once you do, mm -hmm. I've always had my greatest um, successes mm -hmm. after something very, very right. painful, more mm -hmm. traumatizing. But you have you have to have time to heal and come back from it, mm -hmm. or else you're just gonna hurt somebody. Else. Right. And I think that's what we're lacking. We don't take the time to heal. No. And then sometimes 
you don't know how to. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm tr I'm taking the time to heal, but then I also feel like I don't know how to heal. Like I I, I take time out and I say I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna I'm gonna be celibate and I'm gonna you know do this and I'm gonna do that. And I really feel like I'm healing, but that's because in that moment when I'm working on these things, there's no trigger. Like the minute I trigger, like a, a okay, now I'm, I'm celibate. I ain't got no man. It's easy, you know what I'm saying? But then when somebody trigger, then it's like you everything. How do you? It, that for me, how do you truly heal? Like what? What do you do? Because I feel like I'm missing something in the healing department. Like I feel like I'm healing when I keep myself to myself. You know what I'm saying? There's no if I'm it, right, there's no threat. Like if I say, okay, when I'm in a relationship, I might get like um, an attitude, or I might get certain things that I do, and then I'm like, Tasha, you gonna have to like, okay, one example, letting stuff go instead of holding on to it, holding, keep bringing it up, keep bringing it up, and then so you know, I'm in the healing process, and I'm like, yes. So now I feel like I'm ready. I'm, I've been single and whatever, and then the minute I get into a relationship. All the things that I you feel like I worked on, it's a wrap. Right. It's a wrap. I be like, saying, You know what I'm saying? Like, how the hell? That's that what, was so please, for the people that, that's listening, how do you heal? Like, what do you do? Because I feel like you can how do you take, know? Like, how do you know that you're doing the right thing? You just know, I think. But how? Like, what, you just know. what is the process you're of You're not healing? ready. It's different for everybody. So, and that's, so what what I might take three, four months to heal from, it might take you a year. It just depends on how traumatizing, how you measure the tr right. the traumatic mm, length of that. But I be thinking experience. I'm healing. I be thinking I'm healed. And then I get into a triggered situation and then it's like get away from You're me. not. So mm -hmm. that you, well so. what made you think you was healed though? Yeah. I, I, cause I, I don't, I don't know. You just felt better? I guess I felt better, and then I, you know, I, in the process. Okay, so let's just use it as an example. I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm not dating. I put that away. I'm working on me, and I feel good. I feel like okay, so you know, I feel like I'm ready. Like I'm okay, ready now. now I'm ready. I, I done took the time out. I done healed. I done prayed. I done meditate, yoga, you know, the edges, you know, edges, edges, you know edges, edges, edges. everything. <laughs> you do all them stuff, and then you be like, okay, I'm in a peaceful place. I'm in a good frame of mind. I'm, I'm happy. I think I could do this. And then you have that, you start dating, and then it's like, damn, that thing is triggered, it's, it's and then you still, it's, it's, it's still there. there. Like, this, is, this is how I think you know when you're healed. When you can forgive. Forgiveness is the best healer. You have to learn to forgive, not for the other person or whoever, for yourself. When you can look at the person whom, because you're talking, we're speaking of in, in speaking of a relationship, mm -hmm. when you can look at the person who you feel has hurt you or scarred you in some way, when you can look at them, you can talk to them, you can think about them and not have any ill will or any negative thoughts, then you're healed. You're ready to move on. But then, my question to that is because, like, so we're going to use pastors as an example because. A lot of people was like, well, why do you, why are you talking to him? So like months later, probably about a year later, he was contacting me, and I actually didn't have a problem talking to him. For me, I thought thought that was my way of trying to heal. If I talk to him, if I have That's a conversation with him, him, you know, I'm over it, right? But technically, you know, even now, I'm, I'm in another relationship, but I technically really didn't want. It still bothers me. There are things that still. You know, sometimes you may just be driving and thinking about something like, what happened? <laughs> and then a little tear might come out. You try to hold it like, oh, I'm not crying, but a little tear might flow out. Mm -hmm. So technically, I'm not healed though. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm saying. I need But then to it goes back to like you were saying problem. how traumatic I took that. Because yes. you that was not ready. That, right. Mm -hmm. So maybe I wasn't ready. I wasn't done yet. Mm -hmm. I was still baking, guys. <laughs> I wasn't ready to put my oven. She I wasn't think, ready. I think it's, it, 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 I, I just, I just think that what what is what is healing? How how can we say we are healed? What what will make you feel like you're healed? It's 
get but I, everybody. Yeah. Some people don't even that's need that's what I'm saying. I'm thinking I'm healed. Leave the pieces on the Did floor. somebody do something and I'll ask y'all? Some people like, do. Some people are good at that. I'm good at that. Some people just be like, you know what? It's peace but, out. And they done. No, and they right. it But it always comes down. I think it yeah. also has to do with your personality type too. Some people just yeah, have that personality that they don't, stuff don't bother them. They don't care. So it didn't work out deuces and then they move on and they go on about their business. I used but to be like that. I think me old. <laughs> I used to be like deuces. Next thing. I mean, I'm, now yeah. I be like, do, do, <laughs> one finger. Let me think about it. You still like me. Yeah. Right. You gonna call me later? Why he ain't call? Like, you play. He ain't call me? Like, you don't know? Let me see if you want to call. Let me see if he active online right now. Right. He's still thinking about me? Yeah. After you tell him not to call you. Exactly. Like, wait for him to call. <coughs> it's real <coughs> simple, guys. If we tell you not to call, call. Right. I know. Duh. We really mean call. <laughs> right. Don't talk to me no more. So... But talk to me. Yeah. I mean, duh. Are you dumb? dumb? It's simple. <laughs> so, well, that's that's good. New beginnings are usually disguised as um, painful endings. But like that's change. <coughs> change sorry, is y'all. necessary to progress. Change is not always. Should have had some coffee. I know. I'm, I'm finna go get my thing. Yeah, I got to go. I'm going yeah. to. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm here. You ain't but I'm you. trying. That's the, that's that's the, what's most important. The fact that I'm trying to heal is the most important. Absolutely. Um, so, just how do you know when you're healed? Mm -hmm. That is a good question. That's the question. And we want to know. How do you, what, what are your healing techniques? Mm -hmm. Please. So, yes, throw out healing techniques and how do you know how that you know you're healed? healed? And how do you know that you're healed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And inbox us, let us know. Post something, tag us. I am at Ziggy Bailey. Um, the traveling pants of a single mom is long, but <laughs> you'll, you'll find us on Instagram. And she'll probably tag. Um, and once she tags, you can find us um, on there. But you can find the podcast on YouTube. So it will be the abbreviation T T P O A S M podcast. I finally got it touched. I, finally, I think I had it. Touched. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you can find us on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and some people don't know about Podbean, but if you know about Podbean, we're also on Podbean, so you can go and follow those platforms, like, listen, send us your questions, mm -hmm. um, subscribe. If, yeah, subscribe if there's any specific topics that you want us to discuss. We in these screens. Yes, let us know so we can bring it on and we can just have like collaborate on what's really good in these streets. Mm -hmm. So one of our first collaborating question is, how do you know that you're healed? And what do you do? What What are some of your techniques to help you heal? And not putting on your freaking dress and going out to the yes. clubs. That's, that's, one of the, well, that's one of the most famous ones. Like, oh, okay. I'm going out tonight, mm -hmm. okay? And then right back to the same situation with Taquan. Be at, at the end of the night, you be drunk and, and texting him. Right. <laughs> Girl, go home getting the bed. Right. So, and then I want your show ideas. I have a lot of ideas. I'm gonna post um, three different topics, and I want you guys to tell me which one the next show should be about. But if you have any show uh, show topics, box me in and let me know. Okay. It's about time to wrap yes, this up. It is. So, guys, thanks so much for listening to the Traveling Pants of a Single Mom. Again, go follow us on our platforms. So we can make this great. Send us your questions. Um, so thanks so much for listening. And we out. Peace, Peace out.